Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis here, as always, with Sarah Powers. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Megan. Are you grumpy today? I'm not grumpy today. Do Me we either. have to talk about this? <laughs> yes, we do. I just think it's so funny. So, guys, we are doing a More Than Mom episode today. Um, if you're a new listener, we do these on Sundays every now and then. Well, what, a couple times a month, I yeah, guess? Twice a month. We just talk about fun stuff, just fluffy, light topics. It's not like Tuesday episodes where we dig in deep on parenting issues. This is just... Sarah and I talking about whatever's on our mind. And I came up with this idea. I love it. Because Tuesday of this week, the week that we were recording, um, we both were grumpy. And I will tell you, I didn't know I was grumpy till you said you were grumpy. Then I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I'm grumpy too. <laughs> so it got me thinking about like our grumpiness. Tri- like, you know, we were usually pretty upbeat yeah. on this show because we like talking. Even on days I'm in a grumpy mood, I'm always happy when I'm talking to you, yeah. Sarah. Um, So we probably sound like we're just like come off like we're just chipper and happy all the time, but we are not. No, everybody gets grumpy. It's a universal topic. And I know that these episodes are not really about motherhood and parenting, but I also think that it's it's okay for kids to know that moms get grumpy. It's actually better, I think, if you can say like, this is me grumpy rather than just internalize it and say, this is me who I am. Because it really, when you're grumpy, it is like like wearing a different hat. It is like a different kind of day. Yeah. It's like wearing it. Like I think of it as a filter. Yeah. That's yeah. That's my like that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me kind of dark and sharp. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product. The algorithm sends my way. You know, what's not too good to be true though. Our sponsor ritual and they're clinically backed essential for women, 18 plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. We are welcoming back Dr. Mom Butt Balm as a sponsor today. And Megan, I guess you must be back to changing diapers again, right? Now that you have a step grandbaby in the mix. I have changed a few lately, Sarah. And yeah, it really takes me back to that memory from early motherhood. 
I actually always enjoyed diaper changes unless they were the really gross toddler ones or if there was diaper rash involved. Oh my gosh, yes. I remember being so stressed out, like gearing up for the saddest diaper change ever. Your baby knows it's going to hurt. You know they're going to cry. It is just the worst. And having to use goopy, gross diaper rash cream definitely didn't help. Dr. Mom Butt Balm was developed by a mom who's also a doctor when she couldn't find any traditional products that worked for her baby's persistent diaper rash. This pediatrician-approved formula is made with all quality ingredients and no artificial dyes or preservatives. And since it's easy to remove, you won't have to wipe and wipe to get it off of your baby's skin. That is so important, especially if they're already a little chafed. And I love the way this formula feels. A little goes a long way. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. All right. Are we ready to dig into getting grumpy? Yep. Megan and Sarah getting grumpy. Okay. I'm going to, I have some questions that I'm going to ask and we can either jump back and forth or you can answer and then I'll, then I'll weigh in. Okay. Um, But the first question I have for you, Sarah, is what kind of scenarios lead to you being grumpy in the first place? Like, what are your triggers? Yeah. I mean, this is such a good question because if you don't know the answer to this question, you might be getting grumpier more often, right? Like we can just like, yeah. And just like, we know this about our kids, right? It's good to know it about ourselves. So um, the ones I made a note of are anytime I'm feeling time strapped or behind schedule is a trigger for me. Um, If I've had a plan and it's going awry, which can lead to feeling time strapped or behind, those are related. Um, Another one for me is if I've had a particularly big emotional upset and I don't really slow down to, I don't know, talk it through with somebody or like let myself feel the feelings, I will get grumpy like a day or two later and think, Hmm. why am I so grumpy? And then realize, oh, like that was a really rough, day that, that we had that there, thing is still right. there and it just kind of like seeps out it's got it's got to go somewhere right um yeah. also having to go anywhere on a friday night makes me super grumpy I what really, is it about a friday night i really like staying in on friday nights it feels like um i don't know it just feels like hunkering down well it seems like it's a nice transition to the weekend right so you don't have to jump out exactly. of week mode right into weekend mode you get like a night exactly and we're more in. likely yes we're more likely to order takeout and or a five o'clock cocktail instead of waiting yeah. until the kids go to bed or put on a movie for the kids and like go in the other room and just talk. So I just, I love our Friday nights in and because I'm a creature of routine, if you disrupt that, I might get grumpy. Um, and then I said being hot. We're going to talk about weather later, but I just, <laughs> being hot is a trigger. I don't like to be hot. How about you? Okay. Um, well, you know, I've actually just started kind of realizing some things about my energy patterns. I've always known they've been all over the place. Like Mm -hmm. I've always known I'm not somebody who works steadily eight to five every day. That's just never been my thing, but I haven't quite been able to like wrap my brain around how I like what I do, how I do work. Right. So I've realized I'm like in three, I'm in three different, in one of three different phases at all times. I'm either in hardcore consumption phase, which means I'm just taking in information, Mm -hmm. taking it in, taking it in, or I'm in synthesizing phase, which means I'm thinking, which it could literally mean I'm staring at a wall. Mm -hmm. Like, all day. And I can, and then I, and then there's there's productivity mode. And I think when I feel when I'm in one mode and I want to be in that mode, but things keep getting in my way Mm -hmm. and not allowing me to be in that mode, particularly when I get in productivity mode, because Mm -hmm. when I'm in productivity mode, I feel like I could do the work of a week in one day, Mm -hmm. but I feel like what always happens is stuff, you know, you can't do that because life continues to happen. And like, uh, you know, maybe that's the day a kid is sick mm-hmm. or that's the day that you have a bunch of errands you have to run in addition to all this other stuff yeah. you have going on. So I get grumpy when like my external forces that are at play don't line up with what pattern or what energy mode I'm in. That's so, is, yeah, that's so yeah. interesting. Cause I feel yeah. like ours are almost similar, except mine is not about internal energy patterns at all. It's about like what I've decided to do that day. It's like about right. the plan. Yours is much more about like the, this sort of like intuitive feeling of the space you want to be in. But in both cases, right. we get grumpy when the world interferes. The world, right. The world is still going on. That doesn't care. Right. My kids don't care that I am in want to stare at the wall and not talk to anyone mode right. or right. whatever it is. And so I get grumpy. It's kind of like that whole when expectations don't match yeah. reality or what you wish were was reality isn't matching actual yeah. reality. Um, and, and sometimes it's like delayed grumpy because Mm -hmm. I'll get stressed Mm -hmm. and I'll get like 
irritable, but like low level irritable, or I'll get like, I get like, I go through the gamut of emotions and sometimes the grumpiness doesn't come until later mm-hmm. or I don't recognize it mm-hmm. until later as grumpiness. Okay. So moving on to the second question. Okay. We've talked a lot about our Enneagram mm-hmm. um, personalities on the show. And for people who don't know, we, we did a, a whole show about personality types, right? We did. It was a, a long episode. time ago, but we can also, we we've mentioned it again. And we'll, we'll, if you don't know what we're talking about, we can put a link in the show notes and you guys can check it out and go down that rabbit hole if you haven't before. Yeah. We're going to shove you right off the, the side of that rabbit hole because it is, and it's an amazing tool. Like I've done personality tests. I love personality tests, but um, Enneagram, I found to be transformative. I mean, it really made me look at my personality in a very different way. And I feel like I make everyone take the test that I know. And Sarah, you and I have discussed our results um, ad nauseum. But basically what it is, the way it kind of differs from like Myers-Briggs is that instead of just telling you the way you kind of project out into the world, it really goes deeper and talks about the reasons. Like what is your, your, what is your main motivator in life? What is the thing you are afraid of or the thing that you need or whatever it is? And that is the thing that kind of drives you. And then anywhere within there, you can be like a healthy version of that number or, or a less healthy version or a super unhealthy version. So there's like a huge spectrum of ways that that can manifest. Right. So Sarah, you're a one. I am. How does your Enneagram oneness play into grumpiness? Um, well, that is a great question. Ones often see, see like a clear right way to do things. And, and I put right in quotation marks because there is no one right way. But right, right could mean um, like a moral version of right, like standing on moral high ground about something being kind of important from a value standpoint. And right could also just mean like efficient and the best way to do something. And sometimes they're, th- sometimes those two are, two are actually sort of tangled up. Like the, right. the fastest, most efficient way to do things is also somehow morally the best way to do things. Right. And well, so, right. Cause you can, you can moralize things that aren't inherently moral, mm-hmm, correct? Mm-hmm, like, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and we also, ones also really enjoy thinking through the details of things, which means that if someone else calls into question the way we're doing things or, or even just like, somehow threatens our sense of what's right and what we've thought through, it can feel like a personal attack almost because it's like in our minds, we think we've thought of this already. So why would you suggest another way? I've already been through this in my mind. Um, And when we're not in our healthiest place, ones can get very critical of little things about others. And I think that's just a grumpy place to be. That's, I don't know. That's like a chicken and egg. Like, are you grumpy because you're out looking for your spouse or your kid's little socks that they left out on the floor or, or is the fact that you're doing that making you grumpy? Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like, it goes both ways. And so it can get into a cycle. It can, and it seems like it can become a cycle. Yeah. How about you? Ones, ones are, what's the, like, what's I think the, it's word? the reformer, like the, ideal, the, the reformer. reformer, which okay. is uh, it, actually it, you, you almost said idealist. And I think in different, depending on what you read, it can be both. The, um, the yeah, reformer okay. is connects more with me because a one will walk into a room and it, it, again, it could be from a nitpicky negative perspective, or it could be from a do good or improvement perspective, but a mm. one will walk into a room and see the things they want to fix. And depending on how kind of healthy you are, that can be a grumpy place to be. If you're walking yeah. into every room or every relationship or every conversation, nitpicking at what's wrong. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm a two. Um, interestingly, I have a lot of ones in my life. We've mm-hmm. talked about this. You have a lot of twos in your life. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of funny how that happens. I think people are drawn to mm-hmm. certain types for a reason. Um, but twos are, I've seen them referred to as the helper. I think I've seen them referred to as the caretaker in, in one of mm-hmm. the um, books that I read. And it's really like, it's very, and I have gone around and around. Sarah, I was reading a book about the Enneagram last week and had a moment of panic. I thought I had mistyped myself, <laughs> like literally had a moment of panic and then realized, nope, like I read it through and I was like, no, I'm still, I'm still right. But, um, twos are really, they seek love through being important to other people. That's really basically what it is. Like that's the motivator, right? So where two can get unhealthy or where two can be problematic is that we don't like to let people down. Um, and if something doesn't go right, there's this knee jerk shame, Mm. blame Mm -hmm. situation that we have. Like, even if no one else is pointing a finger and saying, this is your fault. It's very easy for a two to, to internalize mm-hmm. guilt or fault. Um, even when there's like really literally no fault to be had, right. like no one's at fault, but a two will still feel that they are at fault. Uh, and there's some kind of weird, like you, you were talking about your cycle that you get in or like this mm-hmm. weird roundabout way. So I, so I will feel guilty 
for not meeting an expectation and then irritated because I feel guilty and I start to feel defensive and not want to meet that expectation or resentful and not want about, to meet the expectation yeah. or I feel resentful that I have to meet the expectation, which mm -hmm. is dumb because no one said I had to, you see what I'm saying? Yep. Like I create, it's like I create it in my mind and that is a super grumpy roller coaster to get on because mm -hmm. you can't win. Yeah. It's not, you can't win that game because it, it, it turns things that aren't real yeah. into like you're, you're operating from a place like from a truth that's not even true. Yeah. So that is definitely like I get unhappy and stressed because I think someone else is unhappy or stressed because of me. And then the stress leads to me being grumpy mm -hmm. about it. Cause I'm like, well, why does that person expect that of me anyway? And they never even said that they did. So yeah, it's it. Knowing that about myself actually has helped me start heading things off at the pass, not saying yes to things or apologizing for things I didn't do because mm -hmm. that's also a way to start spiraling down that grumpy path because you kind of set yourself you're, you're telling the wrong story like if I apologize for something where I didn't actually mean harm or even cause harm mm -hmm. that I'm starting to write a story that's not true and then it's really hard not to see that story through so anyway I think that that's been I don't know I've, I've really really liked digging into that that kind of stuff and it helps me figure out um just those triggers and how to get yeah. out of them. Well, I and I would imagine too, that twos have a habit of overextending themselves. And part of that is because you have created that story. So then you look for ways, how can I be helpful? How can I be needed? Right. And then you're overextending yourself, which is a really good way to be grumpy. If you're, <laughs> especially if the other person doesn't want your help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, and no one, you know, no one's expecting yeah. that of you. You've just, yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, here's a fun one. So tell me about a weather related thing that makes you grumpy. So we're in very different areas. What is the weather like where you are today? It is um, beautiful. It, it's <laughs> cold for California, which means, you know, it was like 48 or 50 this morning, but it'll be 65 and it's sunny. So it's 65 yeah. and sunny. And here it is in Michigan. It is gray. It has been cold all week, but then we had a melt um, that then froze again. Ugh. That's like the rottenest stuff that you get this time of year where it's up and down, it's gray, and then there's snow, and then the snow melts, and then it freezes back over and everything yeah. is ice rink. So tell me about your weather, petty weather-related grump. Well, I have one really specific one, but I will say that weather can legitimately make me grumpy. Um, and I lived in Arizona for 10 years, which has extreme heat. I also did seven winters in Chicago, but I will say heat makes me grumpier than cold in general. But I have something even more specific, and that is the sun in my eyes. If the sun is directly in my eyes and I'm trying to do something, um, driving or even walking or, you know, anything where it's directly affecting me, sunglasses are great, but it, they don't help when the sun is literally directly in my eyes. And it is almost like a physical, like a, like a claustrophobia almost. It's like, yeah. I have to, you know, that feeling if you're walking or driving towards something and the sun is almost behind a building, but not quite. And you know that and if you like, just yes. move a little bit more, you're going to get the relief of like, oh, finally, I'm not looking directly in the sun. Like that feeling to me is like, yeah, it's like a claustrophobia and it is a super grumpy trigger. And interestingly, both my dad and my son have very similar things with Reed. It was when he was really little we almost didn't realize what it was until I started putting sunglasses on him when he was, I don't know, three or four, if we were out in really bright sunlight and it changed his mood. He just really doesn't like the sun in his eyes. That's so neither funny. do I. Yeah. I will get really grumpy about driving into the sun to the point that I will change plans. If I realize I'm heading westerly yeah. around the, around sunset time. Yeah. So I, I get it. I don't yeah. know that it's my biggest because right now I just really like some sun. Right. Um, <laughs> That's true. I know. I know. Well, you know, it's interesting. I don't love cold, but I don't mind it that much. You can always get away from it. Like, even if I go outside and it's super cold and my face hurts like that kind of cold, I can get in my car and start it up. And within a minute or two, I'm, I'm pretty warm. So it's not cold so much that bothers me. It's all the hassle that comes yeah. with this time mm -hmm. of year. Um, two in particular, two things. I really need a pedicure. I am doing this yoga challenge, which means I stare at my feet a lot yeah. right now. And somehow accidentally matched my pedicure to my yoga mat, which makes me so happy. I can't <laughs> even tell you how happy it makes me to look down at my feet and have my toes coordinate with my yoga mat. However, there is no good way to schedule a pedicure in January in Michigan. Yeah. Because if I go in on a cold day and then I put my boots on when I leave, my yeah. pedicure will be ruined by the yeah. time I get home. But I'm not going to wear sandals 
Right. Because it's cold and I'll right. fall. So like, I just find myself in this place where I literally just, I'm in this, like spinning my wheels. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I could do my own toenails, which is fine. Like it's not that big of a deal, but okay. So here's, here's where it gets even like this event gets even more ridiculously <laughs> petty because the last time I got a pedicure, it was at, um, it was at the nail salon. Uh-huh. They use that crazy top coat uh-huh. and it takes forever to get off. So I like, was going to ask you, do you feel as grumpy about it if you just have nothing on your toes? Because I would rather have nothing on my toes. It's all the like modern, my, it's, it's the modern yeah. dancer in me. I don't mind bare toes. I hate chipped, like two month old pedicure. It's so, it w- drives me bananas, but I don't mind yeah. nothing on my toes at all. So I don't, in theory, mind nothing on my toes. I will say a couple of years ago, I dropped a wine bottle on my toe and my toenail has not been quite the same since. And I don't feel that it looks attractive without yeah. polish on it. But I don't mind the look, especially in the summer when that, like, I don't know, it has a chance to get some exposure yeah. to the sun and yeah. aren't all yellow and weird. Like, right. then I feel like my toes look fine. But getting the toenail polish off right. last time was a major, like, I had to soak them. It was kind of ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and go in and maybe sit there for an hour or just have my sandals on and walk really fast to my car. I don't know what I'm going to do. But my other... That brings me to my other vent about this time of year is that I'm already a klutz. Like I have a hard time not hurting myself just on a good day. Yeah. Like not walking into something, not tripping over yeah. a crack in the sidewalk. And when it's icy out, like it is going to be for like the next two months, I am a danger to myself and others. Like <laughs> I can't walk without slipping everywhere. Like I just feel like I am, it's, I walk out of my house every day and who knows what's going to happen to me. Okay. And last year I had two bad falls. Yeah, that really I remember that last up. So year. now I'm yeah. even a little more paranoid. So I do that walk like a penguin thing that you're supposed to do when it's really icy. Right. Have you seen like, right. the pictures yes. of these? Yes. Like, yes. Like you keep your hands out and you <laughs> waddle. Um, so I waddle everywhere. It's ridiculous. <laughs> well, you are going to be on a plane in just a couple of days out here to see me. So we can solve the pedicure yes. problem. We can <gasps> put the sun yeah, in your maybe eyes. Yeah, I'll just wait. Okay, I'll just wait till I come there. That's actually perfect. I mean, I'm going to hate to come out there with gross looking toes, but knowing... I can take care of it quickly when I get there. Yeah, and keep your flip-flops on. And keep my flip-flops on. Okay, that's great. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash mom hour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okie doke. Sarah, not so long ago, we set intentions for the year. We, we each picked a word mm-hmm. um, and our first was our first episode of the year. I think yeah. it's the January 8th episode. So we have okay. if you're behind. We have episodes on January 1st and January 8th where we talked about this idea of intentions, but where we really. Yeah. Actually, it was both. We, we kind of talked about our words, but we really went deep uh, in the second epi- episode of the year on January 8th. Okay. So yours was invite and mine was patience. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering um, if anything about that intention or trying to see that intention through or trying to live it or, or anything um, has made you grumpy. I, well, I think that's a really interesting question because I think of the New Year intentions as like all of this positive energy. Right. Um, but I think a lot of us are trying to change habits. And when you change yes. habits, you run up against all kinds of things about yourself <laughs> that, yes. that, you know, may or may not be grumpy in some ways. So that was, I had to think about this question, how I would answer it. But 
my word for the year was invite. And I meant that literally. And then also in this kind of more philosophical sense that I talked about in the episode, but I have done a fair amount of literal inviting. I had a birthday party for my six-year-old just turned six. We're having a Super Bowl party this year. Uh, it will have just happened. I think when this, nope, it will still be coming up when this episode airs. So I have sent out some evites. I've invited friends for coffee. I have been in inviting mode. And the wow. flip side of that is that being overscheduled can make me grumpy. <laughs> so I wouldn't say that like it has made me grumpy, but it's something I'm it could. <laughs> I'm aware of when I look at my calendar and I'm like, you know, tomorrow uh, we're recording this on a Thursday. Tomorrow I'm going hiking with my friend Catherine, who's a friend of the podcast, and you know her, Megan. And that is like, I'm totally looking forward to it. But I invited her to get together like a couple weeks ago, and now it is on my schedule. And that's something I have to be aware of because having too much on my schedule can make me grumpy. Does that make sense? Like, I, I, yeah. I still want to go on the hike, but I am dealing with the realities of having been in invitation mode. So, yeah. Well, OK, so mine was patience and kind of to dovetail with that, I have embarked on this crazy pants yoga challenge through my studio where I'm taking I have to take 60 classes in the first two months of the year. Um, so it's been interesting because first of all, I find myself wanting to front load a lot. Like I'm traveling twice in the next two months. So I am mm -hmm. front loading. Like I'm on, I've already taken my 31st class and we're recording this on the 24th. Mm -hmm. So I'm ahead, but like, I kind of wish I could just be done next week. Like, yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to do all of the, like, and that's not the point, right? The right. point is to have a sustainable daily practice, not to do 60 yoga classes in a month and then never do yoga again. Right. So I have to kind of remind myself, like, this is a sprint right now because I have to kind of sprint to stay ahead. Right. Because I'm not going to be able to go every single day, but also like the, that's not the point. And right. so that's been interesting. And so um, I've also had to really try, and it's not exactly grumpiness. I think it's actually really been good for me, but it's hard for me to sometimes get to these classes and just like at the pace the teacher sets. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, it's really hard not to be thinking ahead to what's next or um, mentally trying to guess. Like I'm going enough now that I can remember the teacher's mm -hmm. different styles mm -hmm. and I kind of know how they structure their classes. And so every time I find myself mentally trying to get ahead of them and thinking I know their number, I swear every time they, they change it up. I'm sure they do that on purpose. Right. It's probably some kind of like a teaching method but like I will think I know what's going to happen and then it will be different and that makes me grumpy because so I thought testing your patience it's testing my patience and then also related to this yoga thing I just have a really petty vent okay so I spent 40 bucks on a water bottle I know that's not that much like I know people spend more than that on water bottles but to me yeah for something that is a <laughs> that holds free water right it just felt like a lot of money and it's one of those stainless steel insulated ones it's beautiful um, it's by Swell. I really like it. It's crazy how insulated it is. Like I leave it in my car all mm -hmm. the time and it's been negative degrees out and it won't, the water will not freeze. Mm -hmm. I don't That's understand awesome. the, the magic that makes that happen. But here's, here's my pet event. About four people in every class have one of these bottles at mm -hmm. least. And they're a little top heavy okay. and the base isn't very big. And so if you're in a class, especially if you're in a class where you're using a lot of props and mm -hmm. stuff, it is so easy to knock them over. And so at least four or five times in every class I've been in, often it's me, you know, you're getting into this place where everyone's breathing and maybe you're in Shavasana or whatever. And then it's like, Clang. Dong, yong, 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 because this bottle falls over and then rolls across the floor or spins or runs into a wall or whatever. And I'm just like, why didn't they think that through? Yeah. They need like a rubber like heavy. A rubber base. Yeah. Like a base. That's or like make it a little, make it a little fatter on the bottom. But then it won't fit in your cup holder. That's what everybody I don't know, wants. I kind of think maybe it would. I don't know. I Yeah, I don't know. That's I'm really funny. It is the pettiest of petty events. But now I'm just, I wish it had feet. Yeah. Or like or a like little suction. Like when you, you can <laughs> suction like baby dishes to the high chair tray. Yes. Like a little, yes. little suction feet. And I also, I, I find myself, and you know, that also triggers my two-ness. Because if it's me that does it, I'm like, oh, man, now everyone's going to think like I ruined Shavasana or right. I will think to myself, I wonder how the teacher, the instructor feels about these water bottles. Yeah. Like if they just wish that nobody had them because it happens in every class. That's I don't know. Funny. I'm thinking way too much about what other people think about my, my water <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Yoga. All right. OK, <sighs> moving on to the next one. Um, in what way are your kids most likely to trigger your grumpiness and. Are they aware when you're grumpy or like, do they call you out on it? Oh, yes. For those of you who have really little kids, 
your really little kids still perceive these things, but when they get older, they will specifically call you out on it. So a big grumpy trigger for me with my kids is, um, and I think I've talked about this on the show, but anytime I'm perceiving that they are being uh, ungrateful, especially if we've gone to great lengths to do something fun. So this tends to happen mm. like in the summer or on vacation, we're going to the pool. It's hard to take kids to the pool or the beach or the theme park or the fun places. And, you know, we, we have a reputation for not liking that kind of fun around here right. because it is, it's hard work. And luckily my kids have gotten to the point where it's, it is fun. We do go, we take them out to the movies. We go out to dinner as a family. And I really like that we're in that phase. But if I perceive that they are like, let's say they we've just done and spent a bunch of money and we've been to the movies and then they start whining for ice cream or like they start fighting or they start not wanting to get out of the swimming pool. And my trigger is like, I did all this for you guys. I spent all this money. <laughs> I worked so hard so you could have fun. And you, that's like what's going on in my head. And so, um, they do call me on it because what tends to happen is I get really sarcastic. I'll say things like, well, I guess next time we won't go to the pool or re be really like a little bit flippant about it. And it's made them sad before. Like they've been like, Aww. mom, don't say that. Like, and so <laughs> I, we've had conversations Aww. about it and I've said, look, I reserve the right to be grumpy. If you guys are acting like ungrateful, you know, little brats. No, I wouldn't say that. But if you, if you are acting if you're bickering and fighting and acting ungrateful when we do these fun things, I reserve the right to have that be a grumpy trigger, but I will try to check my sarcasm because the sarcasm comes out and they, they like it, it puts them, it stops them in their tracks. They're like, right. Yeah. That's nasty mom. <laughs> so. Well, and it's like, it's kind of like the way we would talk to our kids. Like you, you can feel however you want. Yeah. Right. Um, but, but like, let's not make other people feel uncomfortable yes. because of the way you feel. Exactly. And <laughs> yes. the sarcasm yeah. is like a cheap shot, right? It's like, right. Me being, and it's usually, it's usually not true, which is like rule number one about threats is like, you better be able to follow through. Right. But I'll right. say things exactly. like, well, I guess next time we just won't do this. And the truth mm -hmm. is that's probably not true. Right. Like we right. are probably right. going to do you it. You are again. probably going to do so it. So it's yep. totally not useful and they don't, they pick right up on it and they don't like that. So we've had conversations about that, but I still reserve the right to be grumpy. <laughs> I love it. All right. How about um, you? Well, so I know that I, yes, my kids are aware. I think Clara is the most aware. And I don't know if it's just because she and I are closer. I don't know if it's, she's just particularly sensitive. She's so sweet and sensitive and tends to take a lot of stuff on herself, um, which, you know, has made, has checked, made me check myself a mm -hmm. lot because I, I can see it in her face. Like she knows. So she like little things I always think are subtle. Like if I'm annoyed because I'm being interrupted and I, I'll do like a really hard inhale like yeah. yeah and my nostrils are flaring yeah. and she immediately apologizes yeah now I don't feel like the boys ever would have done stuff like that right. like they probably don't pay that close of attention to my no my nostrils but like Clara is up in it and yeah so she'll apologize and she's really not done anything wrong and then I feel bad but then I get grumpy because I'm like well you don't have to apologize you didn't do yeah. anything yeah <laughs> so it's like it again is that vicious cycle um my biggest grumpiness, I think, again, interruptions. I used to be way better about interruptions. I think now it's because I'm not in, I'm not in the habit of having, how do I put this? When a three-year-old or a two-year-old is tugging on your sleeve, it doesn't feel like an interruption. It's just parenting. Yeah. But now because I feel like they should know better yeah. or they should be able to wait, it feels like a legit interruption. Yeah. It's like, you know, like I'm in the middle of something. Don't you see that? So that's probably my number one grumpy trigger. My other one is when I've decided I'm done for the night, mm -hmm. I'm done. And I have a long fuse. Like I will, I will entertain questions. I will let the kids push their um, bedtimes without getting too mean about it or grumpy. Like I am great, great, great. But then I have a cutoff. Yeah. And when the cutoff is done, when I have decided kitchen is closed, I'm done parenting. And I'll even say I'm done parenting now. Right. My parenting is over. It's, I'm done now. Um, if they continue, like even seeing their faces yeah. <laughs> makes me so annoyed. And I, it's just because I know they want something. And yeah. sometimes like Clara the other night, you know, kept coming in my room to remind, to tell me one more thing, one more thing. And it was all happy stuff. It wasn't like she didn't want anything yeah. from me. She just wanted to say goodnight again. And I was having, and then I'm having a really hard time. Like I'm having to like breathe my way through yeah. it because I'm, it's so over for yeah. me. I'm just, and then she's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're like, Stop <laughs> it's just apologizing. Like, yes, exactly. Exactly. So <sighs> yeah, we both get there, right? We both get grumpy. Everybody um, does. Yes, I know. So I'm actually going to ask these last two in, in opposite order than okay. what I had written down. But uh, 
We both recently had a grumpy day, the same grumpy day. Yes. So you just describe the day, what went wrong and like how your grumpiness manifested. Yeah. And we should say like, these were very run of the mill grumpy days. These weren't like something terrible happened. It was the kind of grumpiness we're talking about where you're like, why am I so irritated today? Right. Um, so I, looking back, it was Tuesday of this week that we're recording and Monday was the Martin Luther King day holiday and it was Violet's actual birthday. And we put her party on that day, which, you know, I still stand by as it made sense at the time. Cause it was a day off of school. We had the party, we had her actual birthday, but it was a lot. Um, and so Tuesday morning, not only do I feel like I'm a day behind in work and in life because my kids had Monday off of school and we, you know, had a family day. But also Violet was a total basket case that morning. Like she oh, was no. like, didn't want to go to school, cry, like things that, that normally don't happen. Like, like Brian had to, we had to put her in the car. Brian takes her, takes them all to school and like physically take her arm. You know how they do that thing where they grab on. She wanted yeah. me and had to like wrestle myself from her grasp. And she like screamed all the way to school and Brian had to walk Ugh. her in like one of those kind of. So that was like a really downer way to start the day because I, you know, it was in my mind like why. I think she just was overwhelmed from her birthday and it was a three-day weekend. So Tuesday came rough and early and cold. Um, So that kind of got me started. And then I was looking ahead at my Wednesday and I had two things on Wednesday that were going to kind of also interrupt what I would think of as like a full productive work day. So I had this one day, Tuesday, and I was like a day behind looking at the day ahead and I just felt like I spun my wheels work-wise. And then mm-hmm. I don't even remember, I mean, you and I worked together on Tuesday on stuff. And I don't even remember, it wasn't like bad things were happening. Well, I the just funny thing like, is yeah. we actually got a lot done that day. <laughs> <laughs> when I looked back at that day, because I was also grumpy and felt unproductive. When I looked back, I was like, wow, like you, cre- you had this whole solution you came up with for a, a print thing that I needed. Yeah, that was the highlight. And... That like 45 minutes was the highlight of my day. <laughs> but like there were a lot of conversations going back and forth. There were emails that got answered. Like we got a yeah. lot done, but it didn't. For whatever it was, our perception was off. Like yeah. both of us had the wrong perception. We're telling the wrong story to ourselves about how that day went. Um, all right. Well, are you yeah, ready that, for me to talk about yeah, my day? that? Was, that was pretty much it. It was feeling time crunched. And that was, yes. you know, one of my big triggers. And so for me, it was one of those days where I just woke up and had a ton of productive energy and a lot of stuff that I both wanted to get done and knew that I could. Like I, I felt it. Like I was in the zone. You were zone. ready. Yeah. I was ready and I was working and I was there and I was managing and multitasking and all these things. And stupid little stuff kept getting in the way. Like little things came up. Like I ended up having to drive, um, like take Jacob to the secretary of state office, like our DMV. And it just ate up time. And like, and then that didn't work out the way I thought it would. So I had to take him someplace else. And like, Th- that was dumb. And then like other little things, like I forgot I had to call the shop to get my car in. And like, I don't know, like I didn't get someone in the line right away, which yeah. I hate. And they had to call me back. I do not like to have to like leave a message and yeah. get a call later. Yeah. That Cause I don't like to have my phone on. I don't like to right. be interrupted by my phone. So right. I usually have my ringer off. So like having to turn my ringer on annoyed me, like just yeah. little, little stuff. And then William called me from school at three and was like, Hey, are you coming? And I had forgotten. I said, I pick him up. Usually he gets a ride on Tuesdays, but, um, and I was right in the middle of having this print job sent to Staples. So like, I didn't know which one to see through, like right. make Will wait. I'm already right. feeling kind of guilty because I was supposed to be there. So I'd let him down or do I let work down by not getting this order done? And I had to kind of talk that through with myself. So just like one little thing after another. Yeah. Then I go to my yoga class that night and the class was called release and restore. So I thought it was restorative yoga, which was exactly what I wanted. Like right. just lying around basically in Shavasana for an hour in the dark, (laughs) but it was a myofascial release class. So basically what that means is like, you're using like tennis balls and yeah, like foam rollers and stuff and foam rollers to work your muscles. So it's like, it's like when you go in for a massage and it's a hard massage, like it's really good for you and it feels good like the next day, but it's it's not not relaxing. Yeah. It's not easy. It's uncomfortable. Um, it's not paced like a yoga class. I didn't like get up a good sweat, like none of that. It was just kind of uncomfortable and painful. So by the time I get out of the class, now I'm tired because it's like evening now. And I get home and Claire's like bouncing off the walls and, you know, wants to talk to me about whatever she was doing while I was gone. And that's when I realized I was grumpy. It took me the whole day and it was me being tired and wanting to go to bed. And like the house wasn't ready for bed yet. That was like the thing that made me realize yeah. And I will also point out um, that it was HelloFresh Day and I look forward to HelloFresh Day. Like, like yeah. it's a big thing for me. But you and I both got our delivery day wrong. Yeah. We, so we both a, thought it was HelloFresh Day. There was a mix up. <laughs> there was a mix up that wasn't until the next week. 
And that was also like, oh, so yeah. I have to think of my own dinner yeah. idea. And like, I have to go buy food now. Yeah. So it was just like, it was like a lot of like little expectations, not meeting realities. So I have a question for you, but quickly before your last okay. question, do you ever, cause we just both described fairly petty grumpy days, meaning like the things that happened were like, not nothing was life or death, but that's, right. that's the definition of like grumpiness. I feel like it's, right. that's, I wasn't angry. I no, wasn't, it wasn't despair. Or, or, yeah, yeah, exactly. I wasn't despairing. Right. <laughs> but do you ever have like the little voice in your head that is like, cause I do, but I don't know if this is just my personality. Like you're so fortunate. You shouldn't be grumpy about this. Like you, there's like, you don't deserve to be grumpy kind oh. of. Oh, um, no. Actually, I'm pretty good at just feeling what I'm feeling. Yeah, because I think I I think I do sometimes. I think and well, then I could see compiling it, exactly because right? you're yeah. just not giving yourself permission to be petty for a second. And I love like sometimes yeah. when you text me, you're like, "Can I be petty for a second? And I'm always like, "Oh yes, please, yes. <laughs> please continue." <laughs> but like there, I think certain personalities, including mine, think, "Well, other people have it way worse than me, or I shouldn't feel yeah. upset about that." Or like, get it together, dummy, you know? So yeah, I'm just, no. it's just an observation because yeah. there are, it's sometimes we have petty grumpy days. But that's just. We do. And I think for me where the, where I would feel a pang or, or the mental little negative critical voice talking to me is if because of my grumpiness, I hurt someone's feelings or. Oh yeah. I would, I don't have then, that part. <laughs> right. I would be like, oh man, I can't like get it together. Like you yeah. don't have to do that. And then that compiles it too. So like right. it's. Or compounds it. It always like it adds. It's an add-on. Right. It's an add-on feature. <laughs> it's a special feature. It's a special feature. Okay, so you've had many grumpy days in all your years of life. So, what are some tried and true cures for you? Um. Okay. I mean, the first one is just saying out loud that I'm grumpy. I think that helps. Mm-hmm. I think it helps to say it to whoever, a friend, a uh, yep. and and to yourself. Like, just say like, this is what I'm feeling right now, and and no judgment about it. Like I was just talking about it. Like. Um, I think alone time for me as an introvert, um, mm-hmm. and as someone who craves it and seems to crave more of it, the older I get, even though I have a fair amount now, I think that's why like this week in particular felt like, ah, leave me alone world, right. um, humor in any medium. So like funny, dumb internet memes, funny TV, um, entertainment, or it doesn't have to be humor, like any good quality entertainment. I'm listening to a couple of really good podcasts right now. Anything that takes me away and feels kind of indulgent, but I would say a lot of that would be humor. Just even just like a a texting conversation with a friend that's funny and yeah, snarky like you and I have. So that kind of humor really, um, I can get grumpiness can bring out like the sharper sarcastic wit in me. And I think as long as I'm not using it to hurt people, as long as it's being used to like safely vent or, right. you know, snark about something in a safe place, then I think that does actually help a little bit. It's not, I don't think okay. snarkiness is a safe, is like a good strategy for long-term grumpiness, but I think it can, right. it can take the edge off. Okay. Um, I would say yoga, except for that class I went to, <laughs> <laughs> but a regular yoga class, something where I can't think for a little while, like, and just focus on um, the present moment. Yeah. breathe, blah, blah, blah. I always come out of that feeling better. Uh, a bath mm-hmm. is like my, like I bath, like it's like take baths, like it's my job right now. And it, it's like, no matter what's wrong with me, a bath will solve it. Um, interestingly, I also want to be alone when I'm grumpy mm-hmm. or I find that as a cure and I am an extrovert. So, yeah. so in theory, I should gain energy from being around other people. But the problem is for me, when I'm grumpy, I don't feel like I'm the person I want to be around yeah. other people. So being around other people doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> like it just, I feel like I'm not in the right headspace for it or I'm not able to make people feel good because I don't feel good or whatever yeah. it is. So I actually like to be by myself and just quiet. Um, and I would say a full eight, maybe nine out of 10 times that I'm grumpy, the root cause is that I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Like the root, the root reason it's gotten to the point where I even notice it mm-hmm. and it's not manifesting just as like low level stress because stress can lead to grumpiness, but stress and grumpy to me is not the same. Yeah, agreed. Um, so usually when I, by the time I get to the grumpy, it's because all these other things have like stressors have built up. Maybe I, you know, had like a, some kind of uncomfortable exchange with a person that made me, and like mm-hmm. all those things came together and then I'm tired on top of it. Right. So going to bed is the, like, honestly going to bed sometimes if it means like leaving a bunch of crap undone and knowing that like, 
I'm not going to get everything on my to-do list done, but I'm just Mm going to go to bed because tomorrow I'm going to wake up with a fresh slate. Like just kind of setting it up that way for myself. Like it just, it allows me to be grumpy, but to not extend it any longer than I have to. Mm -hmm. And like to know that it's just going to get washed away while I'm sleeping. Yeah. 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 So there you go. Megan and Sarah get grumpy. We did. Hopefully we got ungrumpy. Um, yeah. I have a solution for getting ungrumpy, and that is that I want you to tell people about Tuesday Tea Time with Clara and Megan, which is one of my favorite new things that we're doing, yes. but you're doing. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people might not know about it because if they only interact with us on the podcast or Instagram, where we have... Well, a- I wonder if there's a way that we can pull down one of the videos and put it in we, the show notes. We Couldn't can. We? we can do that. And there's also right. a there's a playlist on Facebook that makes it... It's public, so you don't have to like be on Facebook a lot. I'll link to the whole playlist, but tell everybody what it is first. Sure. So Clara and I um, have talked about doing this for years. We did one a long time ago um, and we just sat around and drank tea and talked Um, and we've been meaning to do it, but like we've just not put structure around it. And finally I said, what if we just do it on Tuesdays? We know that you'll always be with me on Tuesdays. And she got really excited about it. I actually love that we kind of waited though, because now she, you know, she watches you YouTubers. Like she Mm -hmm. understands kind of how this stuff is done. Yeah. And she takes it very seriously. Like she plans content it's so and cute. like she answers comments. It's really cute. But we just talk like it's about 10 minutes. We do a Facebook live video, um, which we're going to try to figure out how to maybe push over and like to the to the site at least once. Yeah. And then we just talk about like she shows her art or whatever she's working on. If we're doing a project, we'll talk about that. Like she talks about school. She talked about her spelling bee. What was the one? We just did. You guys talked about coloring because my kids watched it after school yesterday and they realized that you guys color with Sharpies. And I have like, I have like a weird control issue with Sharpies. I like, I (laughs) I, will, I worry that my kids are going to get them all over everything. Like you can't wipe off Sharpies. So no, um, but yesterday after watching Tuesday tea time with Megan and Clara, we got out all of our like adult coloring books, like the ones you guys were. And I let them color with Sharpies and they were happy (gasps) for like a long time. So well, thanks. it's so satisfying. There's yeah. something about the way a Sharpie fills yes. up those little tiny, those little tiny spaces and shapes that yes. um, is really fun. Yes. So yay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll link, we'll definitely link up that particular video in the show notes. And then if you're on Facebook, just find the mom hour and, and it's in our videos. We don't do a lot of other videos. So that's the yeah. main, the Easy main series right now. Um, and, and we're it, doing them Tuesdays, like, you know, in the evening, like, Around five o'clock. Yeah, when we've been doing them. So. Yeah, no, I, I have actually. It's like because it's your content thing. I, it hasn't been on my radar, so it almost is like a nice surprise. I'm like, oh, they did another video. I'm like a fan. I'm not. I'm not yeah. a producer on this project. I'm a fan. <laughs> Love it. Um, okay, guys. Well, we will be back in your ears on Tuesday with another new regular episode of the Mom Hour. Everything we talked about is always at themomhour.com. You can also email us and tell us why you're grumpy. Hello at themomhour.com or tell us anything that you would like. And Megan, this was fun. This was really fun. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code THEMOMHOUR at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi friends, Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called The Teas Made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Teas Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Teas Made.